executing. Derek Stingley Sr. has been a uh, has been a football coach for a long time. He's a defensive backs coach over at the Dunham School right now. He's a great tutor of defensive backs in our area and around the country. And every Tuesday he is with us on Off the Bench, compliments of City Cafe. Good morning, Coach. How are you? Good morning, guys. How you guys doing? Can you speak to that? The the, the, the coaching pride angle on on when you believe you've got the best plan but you can't teach the guys to execute it? <laughs> yeah, that that's that's a that that is a real coaching problem because most coaches do believe that you have the solution. You know, everything looks good on a whiteboard. Everything looks good on, on video when you're putting it into the um, install for that week. But bottom line is, you know, players still have to execute, but then you have to have the right personnel to execute. And then if you are, let's say, a coordinator, you have to have your message sent properly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to your players. Right. You have to trust your assistant that that's getting across the exact same way as if you were standing in that room giving it to them. Because you can go out there on a practice field and, and implement those things, but then if you have every assistant coach babysitting all the players in practice on every play, hey, man, watch this guy, watch this back coming out. Hey, you got the tight end. If this guy goes here, you, you got to step this way. That's not helping the player. Because now, when it's game time, that coach ain't standing behind him. That coach is on the sideline or in the box. And that player is not being pacified or babysit. Now he has to perform on his own, but he's used to being told the answers before he even reads the freaking question. Mm -hmm. Is that the breakdown? Where, where is the breakdown? I, I don't know, man. You know... Watching the game, you know, being at the game, it was it was it was, it was tough to to watch early on. I mean, early on, I thought that we were going to have one of those knock down, smash out type games that Auburn and LSU normally have. But you know, I think some field position kind of killed us defensively. This was one of the games where the defense really had to play four quarters because offense, as we you know, the coaches want to keep their jobs mm -hmm. and the players, the ones who's able to do it to get an opportunity to go to the NFL, they want to make a living so no one is trying to go out there to be embarrassed or or to give up so many points or to not score points you know <laughs> football just like any other sport you have to make changes like in-game changes immediately sometimes the game plan that you had thought that was going to work you may have to start switching it up changing it up immediately but those players have to get that message they have to be able to know oh we can do this and that not what is that? We've never we never talked about that before. <laughs> why are we doing this now? Well, why are we making halftime adjustments? You can't have that. And I'm not saying that that's what's going on. But sometimes you can, you know, from a I'm not a fan. I'm a I'm a parent sure. who I, I I'm, I'm I'm all about you know LSU winning. But I kind of see things from a different point of view. Sometimes you look at that and you say, Golly. It's, where, where's the disconnect? Yeah, that's what I've been you asking know. myself all year. Like, there is a fundamental disconnect in the communication of responsibilities in this defense. Yeah, but T-Bob, but guess what? It's not on every play. It's not. It's just like you're talking four to five plays a game, but they're big plays because defense is out there for, you know, I don't know how many plays. I'm just throwing a number out. Let's say 45 plays. They may look good for 39 of them. But then those other ones are the ones that matter the most to where it's like we broke down. I'm not saying that everything is just like light a match on it and burn it up. You just have to – everybody got to be on their best game from the coaches to the players to the performance. It's just got to be on their best game. Uh, I guess where, where I get discouraged, Coach, is just like, some of the basic things. Like, at this point, how do you teach a team to defend against the jet sweep? Because right now it looks like the jet sweep motion is just – it gets LSU on the back heel going the wrong way almost every time it feels like. How do you teach a team to contain at this point in the season? Like, these are fundamental core aspects of defense, and LSU's not displaying them. 
Well, it's it's about communication on the field. It's it's about, and, and we, I'm gonna keep saying it's about. Sometimes it's it's about play calling. Sometimes it's about formations that we're in. Are we in a three man front, a four man front? And if so, everybody's responsibility changes mm-hmm. on on the front because now you have this guy may be outside leverage, so this guy got outside contain now, or you got to make sure that 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 you you cut everything back inside. So if you're going to be changing fronts in between games, everybody got to know where they are, what they're doing. They just can't look at all the the eye candy. Yeah, you have to yeah, know eye candy is messing with them. They, bad, man. <laughs> they you fall have to for know it. if if you're getting this 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 false look, that it's influencing you. It's telling you, yeah, hey, guess what? We're going to go this way, but now this guy's kicking out and he's going to blow you out to the sideline. The way this running back got a got a gaping hole. Yeah. You know, just it's. It boils down to doing your job and doing it to yeah. the best of your ability. But at the same time, the message has to be a, a little clearer because I do believe that Bo Pelini has a, a, a system that, that can work. But now you got to ask, do Bo Pelini have the personnel to make that, to, to mm-hmm. make that system work? And if you don't, then maybe you got to tweak something yes. until – you find that personnel or until you coach that personnel a little bit better. Yeah, I think I think that was one of Miranda's strongest suits is kind of customizing his scheme to whatever he had in the cover that given year. Uh, we're talking to Derek Stingley Sr. on the phone right now. Uh, coach, you are um, harder on Derek Jr. than any of us, than like anybody <laughs> in, in the ways when you break down his game. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, what, what were your thoughts? Like when I see those back shoulder throws – that looks impossible to defend to me. What What do you do when, when you're attacked on the back shoulder like that as a cornerback? Well, you you have to know who you're going up against, and and that's one of Seth Williams' um, better um, routes that he run, or you know, uh, quarterback he throws a decent back shoulder throws, not all the time, but he did on two of them. The the way you cover that is, you know, and. I told Derek, you know, you you, you got to almost play hands on just a little longer. You know, you, you can you can probably let them have a, a free release where you slow them down a little bit and stay in front of them, but you you have to close that space immediately. With his best play first, and then you can react to those other things. And I think Derek got caught in a little little space, and then he had to he had to fight back through the ball. But I thought he made a heck of a play on the goal line. Oh, that was awesome, dude. That play. We were super okay. hyped. We were that in play. here I said, dude, how the heck crazy. do you even know that? How did you do that? He was that like, play. he was like, Dad, I'm just fighting. I'm, I'm, I'm fighting. I'm going to keep competing. He, he, his ball skills, he almost punched it out on the 99-yard drive on the back shoulder that he kind of got hit on. He did, yeah. Where, uh, you where, saw where, that? He, I mean, he was – that was a haymaker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, and, and – and I've been saying this for a long time with Derek. Derek, Derek you know, everybody praises. It. Oh, he's the, Derek got some things he needs to work on. He knows that, mm-hmm. and he's going to continue to get better. But what you can't do, and I'm not saying that Derek did this, you, you, you cannot just say, "I'm going to relax." Yeah. yeah. You know, because sometimes, you know, you hear people say, "Oh man, well he he didn't get a pass on this way." But you're going to find some teams are saying, if that's your best guy, we're going to go at him early enough to where we're going to believe in our guy. Yeah. And then if our guy make a play over that guy, now that helps our guy, his status goes up a little bit. It helps more. the whole team. Well, it's exactly. It's exactly, yeah. exactly what LSU did to Alabama last year. Who did right. Jamar Chase catch the first one on? Diggs. Uh, Diggs. Yeah, yeah. 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 Exactly. So, so you, you just got to play ball. And, and I told him that, and he knows that. Like, hey, man, you. you don't sit back thinking no one's going to throw you. You need to welcome it. Welcome every challenge, Coach, because you're going to get a lot of them. Uh, this is great insight, and it's yeah, you, you can it. hear the raw emotion that you speak with. That's why this is beautiful radio. We appreciate you for it, uh, and City Cafe for uh, for bringing us this conversation every week. We'll talk to you next Tuesday. Thank you. It's all good. T. Bob Mandalorian. Oh, okay, 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 Coach. I'll text you. We were just having this discussion. Like, when is it okay to talk publicly? But it was awesome, man. Oh, it was I, incredible. I think they get three days. They get three days. They Seventy-two mind. hours. <laughs> Seventy-two hours. He said it. Yeah, no doubt. Hey, yeah. man, and uh, thank you for uh, supporting uh, All Star and renting your uh, oh, yeah. renting your car. 
Or, uh, I'm over there with Miss Lisa every time I got to travel out. I go get her. I go get the truck. I love it. Thank time. you. There yeah. is uh, Derek right. Singley Sr. checking in this morning. Compliments of City Cafe, uh, just like he, uh, he does every week. And last week, uh, the Stingleys uh, took off to, uh, to Auburn, Alabama, and went and saw Miss Lisa Sessions and picked up a rental over at All-Star Toyota for their trip over to Auburn, Alabama. It's as simple as that, as uh, you can get over to All-Star Toyota and pick up your rental uh, on the corner of Goodwood and Airline. Your mailbag questions next.